This is a fit mess with Zach and Jeremy. Hi there. Thanks for downloading the show. Thanks for being there. Thanks for subscribing hey, on, on whatever device you are subscribed on. We appreciate you uh, you being there. This is going to be a really interesting conversation. We were very fortunate uh, the other day. We got to talk with author Karen Rinaldi. She has a new book out that uh, comes along at an interesting time in my life. Uh, the book is called It's Great to Suck at Something, The Exceptional Benefits of Being Unexceptional. The idea of sucking at things is something that is, uh, I think has held me back my entire life. Uh, the idea that if I am going to do something, I better be perfect at it, especially if people are watching, because otherwise I'm going to look and feel like a dumbass. And that fear, mm -hmm. that fear has held me back from putting myself out there, from trying things pretty much my entire life. And just sort of coincidentally in the last couple of weeks, I've been sort of opened up to the idea of being seen for, you know, all of my humanity, like for all my failings, all my shortcomings, whatever. Um, so the idea that it's okay to suck at something and to not be amazing at it, uh, you know, w without ever having tried or experienced it in any way is, I, I know it sounds weird, but that's new information to me. That that is an eye opener for me, dude. That sucks. <laughs> it sucks that it's new. It does suck that it's new because you know I'm in my 40s for Christ's sake to to be to be figuring this out now. You know I look back at how much time I've wasted worrying about failing at things or or looking bad, um, and it turns out it doesn't matter. And it's wild that it's uh, how freeing it is because already in the last couple of weeks. I feel like I've taken more chances. I've been more confident in, in just trying things because it doesn't matter how terrible I am at them. Like the, the point is to try them and decide if it's something worth, uh, you know, continuing to try or, or just doing for fun or whatever the thing is. You know, I'm reminded, Zach, of the conversation we had a few episodes ago with um, Gretchen Rubin and in, in our uh, giving up our guitars, giving up our dream mm -hmm. to learn to be great guitar players and, you know, the the awesome life that that would provide, even though you know we knew like three chords or whatever. Um, yeah, I would have been okay with just being a, with just being good at it. Yeah, I didn't have to be awesome. Oh, see, I yeah. had to, I had to be awesome. Like if if I can't like just sit down and play something awesome that everyone will will one hundred percent guaranteed enjoy, then forget it. It's there's just no way. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah, I don't think that's the quite the life of a musician, but <laughs> it's a good dream. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's just there's just been so many times like that. Uh, you know, I, I trying to learn how to snowboard, roller skating, ice skating, really anything physical. Now that now that I think about it, but... <laughs> the ice skating one is interesting because while I I don't necessarily have the issue of I'm afraid to suck at it. What I am afraid of is that I'm going to fall and some kid is going to run over my fingers and cut my fingers off. Oh, that's a very detailed fear. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you get you get right down to the the actual irrational injury that would likely happen. That's hilarious. Yeah, there's many other things that uh, fall into the. Um, I don't want to do it because I'm afraid I'm going to suck at it. Yeah, um, and you know, you and I have talked about our our issues with perfectionism, and I think that is a big part of this. That uh we for whatever reason we had it drilled into us early that if you're not going to be perfect at it don't bother because what's the point mm -hmm. um and i know we're talking in in very general and vague terms uh and it's because we suck at so many things so many things and that's the thing i don't want this to yeah, come across yeah the list is long yeah i don't want this to come across as boy everything i do i am great at and so the idea of failing is a problem for me it's quite the opposite. Most things that I do, I suck at. And so mm -hmm. it has created a lifestyle for me where rather than trying to do things and being bad at them, I don't do things and I sort of uh, contract or recoil or hide and just try to blend in, be under the radar, not be seen, whatever, like just, just kind of disappear in the world around me. And that creates just such an unhealthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's just, it's, it's sad, but also liberating that now finally I'm starting to feel like it's okay to just, to just do things and to be bad at them and, 
you know, who knows? Maybe you'll be good at them. That that's a very realistic option as well. So, um, it, it's a it's a reality that I'm only about two weeks into, and so it's still very new and very raw, and I'm still processing how how to live in this world because it's the complete opposite of how I've lived basically my entire life. Well, at least you're figuring it out now because. Some people go their entire lives without figuring this out and don't ever try anything new because they're afraid of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, fear fear is the underlying cause of so many of our emotional problems, societal problems. It just we could we could go for hours and hours on on fear alone. Um yeah, I do want to get to this interview. I think it's a fascinating discussion that we had with Karen Rinaldi. Again, the uh, the title of her new book, It's Great to Suck at Something, The Exceptional Benefits of Being Unexceptional. Um, we talk about so, so many things, but we started the conversation just basically talking about her premise. Why is it okay to suck at things? The fact that it's good to suck at things is great because I suck at a lot of things. So, <laughs> <Me too. laughs> so, so help me feel better about sucking at things. Why, why is that okay to suck at a bunch of things? Well, the idea is to try new things without the fear of failure, without the fear that you won't be good enough. It's about setting out to do something where you relieve yourself of the goal-setting imperatives, the reward, the gain, the transactional nature of it, and you do something just to do it, right? So just for the fact of doing it. And there's a lot of freedom in doing something where you're not called upon by yourself or anybody else to being the master of it. And I'm saying that there's, there's relief, there's freedom. You learn a lot about yourself by doing something that brings you joy, but that is not necessarily something you excel at. And that once you embrace that idea... Um, you open yourself up for a whole host of of things that you can do and try and practice um, that you don't that you will discover right I think a lot of people don 't even start doing things because they go oh i couldn 't do that i 'll never be good at it or um, i 'll never get good enough at it or i don 't want to look stupid trying or i 'm too old or i 'm too this or I'm, you know we, we put all these um, obstacles in our way. To stop, a, to stop us from doing something new and exploring other parts of ourselves. And my point is, it's great to suck at something, so just go for it, whatever it is. And you're going to find that there's a, lot, there's a lot of good stuff hiding underneath that. And our culture uh, would tell us differently. So we learned in your book that you suck at surfing. Uh, yes, I very, do. Very happily. Can you tell us, take us a little bit on that, on that journey of, uh, of why surfing and, and sort of how that propelled you down this path? Yeah, so I started surfing um, um, way late in life when it's better not to entertain um, the absurdity of trying to surf at 40. <laughs> and uh, it's just, a, you know, I, I've always been physically pretty adept at things that I did. And, and, you know, I was an athlete growing up, and I worked out my whole life, and I thought, yeah, surfing, how hard can it be, right? Like, you know, but it was always something I wanted to do but was kind of afraid to try. And then at 40, I said, now or never. And I had one surf lesson, and it blew my mind. And I went, oh, man, this is the best thing I've ever done. And it was terrible. It was like, you know, knee-high waves. I got pushed into a wave. I was basically surfing on a door. I mean, it was so huge. And, uh, and I got hooked. And then I kept doing it and doing it and doing it. And it took me, and this is no joke, but it, and this is because I have a, a life that I can't surf all the time, but I started devoting my life to trying it. But it took me five years to learn how to surf. I don't mean, I mean, I stood up on boards and I was in the water and I did stuff, but I wasn't really surfing, you know, like, you know, paddling into a wave, catching it, you know, down the face, right, you know, turning, riding the face of the wave, kicking out. And that, you know, it shouldn't take five years, but when you're 40 and you're a mother of two and you're running, you know, you have a, a professional life, it took me a long time. So a lot of people kept saying, why do you keep doing it? because <laughs> you're so bad at it. And I said, you know, it's weird. I said, this is the thing I'm worst at, and it's the thing that brings me most joy. And frankly, I, I was puzzled by it. I, I was going, what is that about? And I realized that everything else in my life, being a parent, being a partner, being a professional, you know, taking care of, you know, the things you have to take care of in life, you know, you're for, you have to be good. You've got to try not to screw up. You've got to be as good as you can, especially for your job. 
surfing was something where I just didn't have, nobody was paying me, nobody cared if I was good or not, <laughs> nobody cared at all. It was something I just did for myself, and I realized, oh, I couldn't wait to get back to it. And part of it was because I didn't have to be good. And then when I got better, because you do when you do something that you suck at, but you keep doing it, you get better. But I'll never be great at it. I'll never be great at it. Can I surf? Yes. Do I surf well? Rarely. Does it matter? <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> and I think there's a lot that we could bring into our lives, whatever that thing is. If you forgave yourself for sucking at it, you'll you'll have a lot of joy doing it. I think there's a lot of people who play golf, for example, or run or play tennis who aren't masters at it and yet find a lot of joy in it. But you try to do that. My dad used to break golf clubs because he was so he used to get so mad at himself for sucking at golf. And I'd be like, "But you're outside and you're playing golf. Like, what difference does it make?" And, you know. So the idea is to play golf but not break the golf club in anger if <laughs> you miss that putt or that shot to the green. Right, right. I can re- I can relate to your dad though. I I I just played around a golf the other day and it was just. I, I had to hold myself back from throwing a club into the woods. It was, yeah. but, I, but I was outside yeah. and I had a great time and, and I enjoyed it, even though I spent the majority of my time in the woods looking for my ball. You know what? If you reframe that, when you, you, you did, because you just said you had a good time with it, but as soon as you reframe it or you get this refrain in your head that it's great to suck at something, you can sort of laugh at yourself with it and think, well, this brings me into the woods. I mean, the woods are pretty. <laughs> and now I'm looking for my ball. I have played golf and it's, it's so hard. I mean, it's just one of the hardest things to do, too, um, in a different way than surfing, but it's, it is hard. Um, but I think that it, the reframing of it will take less of that self-criticism. So the idea is really to get rid of that self-criticism, right? Lift that noise in your head because it does you no good. Um, yeah. And if you just and if you lift that, actually, you will play golf better. You'll have more fun doing it. And, um, and then you'll find that you have a lot of patience and tenacity and resilience that you didn't even know that you had, but you don't need to chastise yourself. You don't need to beat yourself up. I mean, nobody, nobody needs you to have a good round of golf. Just you do. And you will, right. You'll make a good shot to the green every once in a while and miss the woods. (laughs) Yep. So I've been terrible at golf for a long time. I'm comfortable with how bad I am at golf. What about something new that I want to do that I'm just so yeah. worried about sucking at it so bad and I, I don't want to look stupid? You know, how do I how do I get over that? So here's a here's here's a thing that I I did a lot of kind of research for the book and a lot of reading and a lot of talking to talking to a lot of people um, a lot smarter than me. And one of the things that you realize is like you're afraid you're afraid that people are going to um, laugh at you or you're going to look at you and you're not going to be cool, right? I think our fear is like, oh man, that's not cool. Yeah. Um, and what happened is I surfed for a lot of years and, um, still stuck at it and sucked at it in a way that I got comfortable with it. But people didn't quite believe it. Like people hear you play golf for 10, 20 years and they think, well, how bad can you be? And you kind of let them believe that maybe you're a little better than, <laughs> than you really are. Mm-hmm. And I posted, I posted a video of me, sur- uh, sucking at surfing and a, a colleague walked into my office and said, so I saw that video you posted and I said yeah and she said you really do suck at surfing and I said I wasn't kidding <laughs> and she said I said and how does that make you feel and she goes because it makes me feel good and I said exactly and I said because you thought I was cool and I'm not cool so like get that out of your head it's what me surfing is the opposite of cool so I would say for starting something new our fear is that we're not going to be cool and here's the thing about coolness coolness being cool wanting to be cool is really a mask for our vulnerability, right? I mean, there have been there are people have written people have been writ, have written about this, and I write about it a little bit in my book. And if you understand that it's a mask for vulnerability, you go, okay. So if I lift that mask and I realize, yeah, I'm vulnerable to sucking at this thing, you know, dancing, you know, playing guitar, singing, uh, stand up comedy, you know, or you know, improv or something, you kind of go, yeah. So what, right? So I'm not cool. Does that really matter? A, it doesn't matter because it's only a mask anyway. And the coolest thing is being able to try something new without being afraid, without being afraid of failing, being able to stumble and falter and kind of come up and go, okay, that was me. And then do it again. That's cool. Like if you're going to, you know, the, the balance is in the resilience and the tenacity and the fearlessness of doing it. So trying something new. Here's the thing. 
you know, at a certain point, you're going to do something new and then you're going to go, this isn't worth it. And then you go, okay, because it's not bringing you joy. It has to bring you, that's the thing, it has to bring you joy, whatever that thing is. You know, I boxed at some point and I boxed for like a year and I loved it for the workout, but it upset me terribly (laughs) to throw punches. And I thought I could see how somebody would get addicted to this, but I throwing punches at someone felt somehow I couldn't get my head around it and I wanted to love it, but I just couldn't. I realized, okay, so I'm not going to stick with boxing, right? You know, so the, you can do things for it. You can test them out and then see how they feel. You mentioned uh, vulnerability, and, uh, and I just got back from a, a, a retreat um, program that was a deep, deep dive into vulnerability, and I've kind of been looking a lot closer at it in the last few weeks and really kind of discovering for the first time, also somewhat late in life, 41, uh, that mm-hmm. vulnerability is really where life happens. Like, that's where you really... Oh, yeah. That's where you really just get what this is all about. And it's so hard to get there. And there's a line in your book that has just been ringing in my ears uh, since I saw it that I know is going to, you know, probably hit Zach the same way. But perfectionism is another self-defense against vulnerability. That is that has always been me, whatever the thing is, especially if there are witnesses to whatever it is I'm trying. Yes. Yes. If there is any chance that I'm going to be any less than perfect at it the very first time I, you know, put my toe in the water or put the board on my feet or whatever the thing is, if I don't nail it immediately, I'm not even going to take the chance. That is something that now I'm trying to turn that page and just dive into everything in my life. But but that, yeah. I just don't think that message has either been around long enough or is not being spread loudly enough that that is where life really happens. Oh, it's so good. I mean, you just, yeah, you just said it. I couldn't, I, I, I can't say it better myself. And I think that that is a counterintuitive thing that people are, what? Are you kidding me? So this, this myth of perfectionism you know, it's just, it's time to bust it. Like, I'm all about busting this myth. I mean, when people say, oh, I'm such a perfectionist that X, Y, and Z, it's like, right, right there, it's like, I'm such a perfectionist, full stop, and that just stops you from going to the next thing, right? Because how are you, who's perfect? I mean, right. I mean, I don't really know any, even the masters of the universe, you know, Kelly Slater, if you're talking about surfing, or, you know, I have a story about Mikhail Boroshnikov in my book, who was one of the greatest dancers they're not perfect. So like holding ourselves at standard, but really what we're saying, really what we're saying is if I'm not perfect, am I still worthy of love? And not to get all hokey, but that's really what we're asking. Am I still worthy of love yeah. and respect? And you're saying, yes, you are worthy of love and respect because that's, you know, you earn that as a human, as, as a, you know, as that, uh, you know, end of story. And our beautiful and perfect selves are really where all the beauty lies, right? I mean, that's why we love, you know, stories of triumph in a way. Triumph over adversity is not the triumph I won. It's the I was not beat down by this, right? That's the vulnerability part. Mm -hmm. The kind of, you know, what is, you know, there's all these things, you know, win, you know, winning isn't everything. It's the only thing. Be the best or go big or go home be the best or nothing at all. Are you kidding me? <laughs> right. Who, who are they talking? Were they talking to like seven people in the world? And actually those seven people aren't those people. So I feel like it's all this, the culture feeds us this crap and we don't think we're taking it on, but we are. And we're taking it on because we're vulnerable because we're humans and we're self-aware and we have these hearts that can be broken and these egos that are, that are fragile and all these other things. And as soon as you start kind of looking at that and looking them right in the face, you know, that fragile ego, that, you know, that heartbreaking or that fear of being, you know, the witness to your, your being human or less than, you know, less than perfect. You go, Oh, I can just push that out of the way. I'm just going to get on with whatever it is. And then, like I said, then all of a sudden it opens, it's where life starts. I mean, that's what you said. And that's really true. It's where life begins. And I, I learned that through surfing because surfing is so damn hard and I'm so bad at it. And I do it in public because that's what you do when you surf. You're out there in the lineup with everybody else. They're mostly younger than I am. They're all younger than I am. Um, or not all, but mostly. And, um, and you know what? It's okay. It, it's, and that's what I realized. It's like, it's okay. 
And that is freedom. And that is where freedom lies. It's so funny because so much, I think, of that um, fear and, and all that, it comes from the internal story that we tell ourselves. Because I would bet, oh, yeah. I mean, the the example you give of, of the surfing community, I, I think... I would imagine is unique in that there's a lot of sort of criticism and, and, and judgment oh, and yeah. sort of get out of my way. But yeah. largely, I would think in life, if you, you know, put on roller skates for the first time, go out on the on the floor and you fall on your ass, you're going to go, oh, God, I'm, why do I even try? This is awful. I suck. But your friends would be like, dude, get up and try again. That was hilarious. You know, like nobody else, I think, judges yeah. you as harshly as I think that internal voice is just constantly beating you down from whatever yes. you learned growing up or whatever. Yes, it's that it's that dark voice in your head. And by the way, the people who aren't trying to, you just brought up a really good point, which is the people who are witnessing your struggle, what it does when you're a beginning, when you're a newbie and you try something new and you're a kook, the people who are the bigger hearted people, the good people, the people you want in your life are just right there to try to help you. Yeah. So it invites incredible generosity and kindness. This is what I have learned. And believe me, there are people in the lineup who have been really mean to me. Yeah. And I've had to learn to say, that's your problem, bud. You know what? If you're, you're going to, you know, you're a 23 year old dude in the lineup getting mad at, you know, this 50 something year old, you know, middle-aged who, who basically has been eight, but I've been serving for 18 years. So I have every right to be out probably longer than him. I have every right to be out there. And my thing is if you don't like it and you're going to judge me, that's your problem. But what happens more often, really, when you open yourself up like this, is people are awesome. They call mm-hmm. you in the waves. They tail push you. They block for you. They, they want to see you succeed. It's, it's the most incredible thing. So, yeah, you're judging yourself so much more harshly than anybody else is. And, you know, why we do that, you know, there's a lot of psychology books written about it. You know, there's, you can read Adler. I mean, he was one of the first psychologists who really talked about that, the, you know, our, our striving for perfection, which is really a striving to succeed, which is an innate, by the way, to not pathologize that because it's an innate striving. Because if we didn't do that, we'd never learn to walk. We wouldn't learn to run. We wouldn't actually progress. What happens is in the distance between that striving and then wanting to be perfect, right? And in that space is where we falter. And what we have to do is strive, but be okay with our imperfections. And it, there have been studies that show that the mentally healthy um, are really comfortable with their imperfections. And it's the people who struggle the most are, quote unquote, perfectionists. You know, it's a lie we need to just drop. And it just, it stops us from so much. And it also makes us, you know, less patient with other people, I think, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I wanted to go back to something you mentioned uh, earlier in our conversation, and it was uh, just the, the fact that you have children. Um, I know for me, part of this uh, journey that I've been on in, in exploring a lot of this kind of stuff has come through trying to teach my kids to be more vulnerable than I was yeah. and, and to take those risks. There have been times when, you know, my daughter wants to do something, but she's afraid. And I'm constantly telling her, as long as it's not dangerous, you know, relatively, go yeah. for it. You're going to regret not doing it so much more than doing it and failing. Um, <sighs> has that, you. Has yeah. that been sort of your experience? And, and how, how has uh, this uh, helped you with raising your kids? Oh, my gosh. Um so good for you, you know, go dad, because that is, you know, the, the, the parents who are pushing their kids to get the straight A's and to do the, get the varsity letter and get the scholarship and get into the best colleges. And I don't, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's so sad. It's not producing uh, well-balanced children. That's for sure. So allowing your child to, to screw up. And it's funny because that's one of the questions I guess, like, well, what do you do with your kids? You don't tell your kids it's okay to suck at something. I go, oh, yes, I do. Because basically, there are going to be a few things in life that we excel at, but so many of the things that we do, even the things we're good at, parent, and that matter, parenting, right, our jobs, yeah. being a partner. I know I kind of miss the mark sometimes, and it's hard, right? So you want to be able to forgive yourself and course correct as opposed to go down the rabbit hole of self-admonishment and guilt and all that crap that does no one any good. So with your kids, A, if they, so it goes two ways. A, you, you, you tell your kid, um, 
that it's okay, right, to suck at something. But also if they see you doing it, even better, if they, because you were just saying that you had to learn how to do this, which yeah. is really interesting. If they see you, learn, you know, t- try and watch dad try this new thing and freak <laughs> right. out. And by the way, your kids are going to go, oh, dad, that's embarrassing. <laughs> totally. You're embarrassing me. And then you're going to go, and then you can have the conversation. Why is that embarrassing you? That's, you know, it's me. It's not you and yeah. stuff. And your kids learn, they really do, they learn by, by imitation. So, you know, just do the thing that you want them to learn, and they will, they will follow. They really will. Zach, How you, old are your kids? Uh, I have a, an 8-year-old and a almost 4-year-old. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're, yeah they're, they've got, they're, they're learning as we speak yeah, every my, second. <laughs> my 8-year-old blew me away. She's always been uh, really sensitive and, and kind of reserved and reminds me a lot of myself, and I'm you know seeing a lot of the regrets from my own childhood coming up through her, so I'm trying to really push her. And the other day, she told me that her and her friend are going to audition for the talent show and sing Living oh. on a Prayer by Bon Jovi. Oh. And I was just like, that is amazing. Like, in my head, I'm going, you guys are going to suck so bad, and that is going to be such an amazing lesson. I cannot wait to be in the front row and watch this happen. That is going to be incredible. And you incredible. know what? And it's going to be, that it's going to be beautiful, yeah. and I bet you cry. Oh, I'm, I'm already cry. crying. Are you kidding me? I'm already <laughs> crying. <laughs> Yeah, uh. totally, totally. <laughs> my um, this all happened partly because the way this came to be, I have to give credit really because the, the the line "It's great to suck at something" was from um, a fellow um, parent of my then school aged son who was struggling with sensory issues and fine motor skills and struggling in school, and uh, it was hard. It was hard for him um, every year, and we were standing in front of the school and. His name was John, and John said, hey, how's Rocco doing? You know, Rocco's standing next to me. I said, uh, you know, he's having a rough time this year. You know, he's struggling with his handwriting. He has some issues doing his homework. And, you know, right, Rocco? And, and then John just looks at him, and he looks up, and he goes, oh, Rocco, it's so great to suck at something. <laughs> this, was, this was when Rocco was eight. He's now 21. He became valedictorian of his high school uh, class. Uh, tr- tripped going up the stairs to give the speech, and fell, which is so typical That's of what would happen awesome. to Rocco. And everybody, like you know, every he he managed it. But I do think I really think that he had these issues, and giving permission for him to kind of suck at some things also allowed him to excel at the things that he really excels at, which are many things, um, and that I was learning to surf at the time. So that's where I got the phrase, and I was like. Wow, that just gave me permission to go out in the waves and just keep sucking. If Rocco has to learn how to, you know, he still can't handwrite worth a damn. I mean, he just can't. <laughs> he has to type. I mean, you can't read his, he can't read his own writing. It's that bad. But it's funny, I thought, if Rocco just has to learn these basic things, you can get out in the waves and suck at surfing and not be self-conscious about it. And it kind of opened a door of, of wonder to me and a way of framing this thing that I did. And I, you know, I never stopped doing it. I, my life surrounds this crazy thing that I do that I'm really bad at. Um, and it has brought, it has definitely brought me the most joy um, imaginable. And I think, what if I was too afraid to suck at it? I always wanted to try, but what if, what if, I, I wow, what if I didn't do that? Because my friends and my my world is, is, you know, a big part of my world is the surfing world. It's a publishing world and it's a surfing world, which are two very different worlds. So it just expands my universe, right? So as soon as you start playing guitar and making music, you expand your, you know, I'm looking at a picture with a guy with a guitar, which is why I said that. But, it, you know, you expand your universe into something else. As soon as you start going to start glass blowing, you know, can you imagine yeah. the people you would meet glass blowing? Right, <laughs> my, right. my other son is a, is a sword master. He's a HEMA uh, I shouldn't call him a master, but he's a he's a HEMA practitioner. He's actually quite good at it. So there's this world of um, German and Italian longsword fighting. It's it's a very it's a pretty esoteric thing, but it's a martial art. And the people in that world are the most extraordinary people because they come from all walks of life. And like you try to sword fight, you think it looks easy. It's like it's so hard. And that's what he does. And it's like a whole new world opens up. It's like, how would you even know? And what Gio says, and this is something we talk about a lot, people go, they, they watch Game of Thrones. They see Arya, you know, kill, I don't know if you watch it or not, but they, you know, see Arya kill the, you know, the White Knight. And then they go, oh, I want to learn how to sword fight, you know. And then they take a lesson and they take, and they realize, oh, 
this is hard. It's a lot of drills. It's a lot of drills. It's a lot of drills, <laughs> you yeah, know? Yeah. And to get good at it takes years. And he said he gets frustrated because kids start and then they drop it because they get frustrated because it doesn't look like it is in the movies. Like, nope, it's a lot of footwork and drills, footwork and drills. And you go, you know, he's been doing it for 14 years and he's actually quite good at it, but he just stuck with it. So it's the same thing. It's, it's any discipline, you know? Yeah, there's a there's a great meme that pops into my head when you say that, and it's uh, this picture of you know Olympic athletes, you know, in the first, second, third place on the blocks on the ground, and it's yeah. and the, the title of it is like what you don't see, and underneath is the years and years of hard work, effort, failure, struggle. Like you don't see that when they're standing on the podium holding up the trophy. You just see they did that thing that looked so easy. You know, it's funny people do that. I don't get what I, that's like. Something to study is why do we assume that someone got to some lauded place? And it was like, oh, it was easy for them. Right. Yeah, I could, ne- I could never. It's like, no, you, you could, you, could, you, you, you know, you, you know, you, you do the time. I mean, there are, there, are, there is innate talent, but most of it is just perseverance, and that's true for any level. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I, I agree. It, listen, the people who are good at things make it look easy, right? Right. People make things look easy, and you know, I've been writing. Listen, I've been writing my entire since I was eleven. And I just and I'm in publishing and I'm an editor and I just started publishing books, writing to publish only like, you know, I don't know, four years ago. And somebody said, Oh, you just started writing? I'm like, No, I've been writing for thirty or forty <laughs> right. years. Right. I was just never frankly, I was never good enough to, to publish and I finally got it down. But that was something that just happens like, you know, writing is one of those things. It just takes it takes decades to get good at. Yeah. It just does. Yeah, so I, I I just wanted to touch real quick on the you may, you actually kind of stole my question a little bit earlier, <laughs> but over the last three years or so, I have jumped into so many new things in my life. Jeremy can attest to it. I've just taken on more and more stuff that I've never done before, and and I've gotten quite vulnerable at it. You know, now that I look back at it, I, I see all these things that are in my life now. Like, you know, I've got a degree that I wanted. I'm a yoga teacher. I'm, you know, certified to teach, you know, certain exercise classes. And I've done a, a military event that I've never been in the military. You know, like I did this huge workout and I look back at it all and I'm so grateful that oh, I decided yeah. to get uncomfortable. And you oh, talk a lot yes. about gratitude in your book and I, it's really validating for me. So I just wanted to hear you talk a little bit about how that, you know, getting vulnerable leads to gratitude later on. Yeah. One of the things I kind of, it's crazy. I did an illustration of it and it's on my website too. And I, it, it goes back to that kind of mask of cool that I was talking about and it's all connected and it goes, you know, it goes something like this. And, and it, it, it's like, if you start out wanting to be cool, right? Like that's your goal. Um, what you do is that you, 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 you start protecting yourself and you don't leave yourself open for gratitude because gratitude is a door into so much, right? So you have to be, you know, being grateful, being grateful. I think we look at the wrong end of the funnel. I've never understood gratitude practice for the difficult things. I think being grateful because you have a beautiful meal and a beautiful family and, you have your health and all the good stuff. It's really hard to be grateful when you get cancer. And this is part of my book, which is why I'm talking about it. But, you know, whoa, how do you do that? I'm going to say, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. And then lo and behold, bad things happen and scary things happen. And you go, okay, how am I going to tap into gratitude? And it's like, oh, because this just breaks me wide open, right? So, like, being cool makes you afraid to be vulnerable. If you're not vulnerable, you can't be grateful. If you're not grateful, you don't build the resilience that it takes, right, to get out there. But if you start being vulnerable, if you start with being vulnerable and you go, okay, you know, I, I am, I'm open, I'm an open, you know, open-hearted, open wound here, you know, I'm just human, I'm just human, really, was what it's saying. And then you kind of open the pathway to being grateful, right, for the stuff that happens, right? You have to, you have to risk sucking at things, you have to risk being exposed, you have to risk your fears in order to open up your heart to be, to feel gratitude. And then once you feel gratitude, right? Gratitude is powerful. It's probably one of the most powerful, I don't even know what you would call it, mechanisms, feelings, um, you know, a neurologist would know what to call it. You know, 
but it can act, it activates so much in us and it opens our heart and then we're more generous and then we're more open. And actually what it does is it kind of makes you more resilient. So this is what's weird. Being, being vulnerable, weirdly, makes you more adaptive and more resilient in the end. So it kind of makes you stronger. Though you wouldn't think that in the beginning because it's so damn scary. And then as far as gratitude practice, I finally understood that being grateful for the tough stuff because of what it can teach you and how it breaks you open. And when you're open-hearted, what you can bring in, what you can feel, right? So you go, oh, if I wasn't dealing with feeling like I'm dying on the couch, which I, I don't mean to get heavy on you, but, you know, when I had a year of battling cancer, I thought, okay, what am I grateful? I'm grateful that I have access to treatment. I'm grateful that I'm home with my family. I mean, this could be so much worse, right? But all of a sudden I thought I'm grateful for this way that I feel, I felt incredibly vulnerable. And with it, I felt this gratitude for all of the good stuff that I'd never felt so powerfully before. And I went, oh, this is how you get grateful for the tough stuff. And that's a hard lesson. But as soon as you reframe that and you do that, you go, all right, so now what? And I was like, all right, I'm lying on the couch. I'm in my last week of chemo, four weeks I'm going to be in Costa Rica and I'm going to, I'm going to surf. And like my husband and my kids were like, there's no way you're going to surf. I'm like, I am going to surf because that's what makes me happy. I'm going to do the thing I suck at the most. I'm going to suck at even worse because I'm at the end of my rope and I'm going to get there. And sure enough, four weeks later, I mean, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> it was not pretty. But you know what? I got my board in the water and I crawled to my feet and I had to start all the way at the beginning again. But I was grateful that I had this thing that I had worked through being bad at so that being bad at it for a really good reason, I thought, how lucky am I that I get to now try to learn how to do this all over again. So it's very, these are very powerful feelings. And then you, then you kind of look, well, you did it, right? You got on the other side of it. And you went through these trainings and these, these, you know, certifications and these, you know, courses. And then you were able to give that gift, I'm guessing. You brought it to these servicemen. Is that what you did? Is that what you were teaching? Is that you were teaching servicemen? Well, I'm, I'm actually not really teaching any of it. I just did it because it was something new to me and I wanted, I wanted to experience it. But, you know, I, I do talk about all of those things a lot. And like, a, you know, people have started doing yoga because I've gotten them into it or uh, so good. You know, certain yeah. workout well, program. So and, like, it's, it's definitely having an impact on people. And, and to be honest, I mean, yeah. the, the reason that this show even exists is because I, you know, I saw the transformation in Zach and the things that he was doing by putting himself out there. And a lot of his advice helped me drop 50 pounds, turn my life around. We started this show. Like he's a really inspirational person by, by just putting himself out there and taking those risks. And that has, yeah. has really put me on a fast forward with my own journey to finding vulnerability, finding gratitude. Like I really, until like last week, I don't know that I even knew how to genuinely feel gratitude. And man, now that I feel it, it's just, it's, it's yeah. overwhelming. Yeah. It's a good it is. drug, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's a really man. powerful one. Yeah. Good for you. Because then here's the thing. Once you learn that it doesn't, you don't forget it. It doesn't go away. Right. If you look, there's a great book to read in Oliver Sacks, you know, who he, he is, who was, I mean, he's, he's now he's left us, but Oliver Sacks is a great uh, neurologist. And he wrote a book called Gratitude that when he was, when he was diagnosed uh, with terminal cancer, he, as a scientist and as a neurologist, he writes this, it's a very short book. It's one of the most beautiful books I've ever read. And it's just called Gratitude by Oliver Sacks. And if you're really thinking about it, that book will, your heart will swell because he just is looking at it from a very vulnerable point of his life. And he's very raw and he's very honest about it and writes beautifully um, it's just one of my, one of my favorite books. I'm putting that on my list next. Thank yeah, you for the it's a good one. <laughs> Karen, I could talk to you all day. The, this has been yeah. absolutely uh, a huge pleasure and, and a joy to, to get to share this time with you. Thank you for this book. Yes. I think it comes along at, a, at an important you. time. It's a great book. Uh, and it's a fun read. And thank you for your time. We really appreciate this uh, opportunity. Great. I hope you, I hope you get something from it. And Jeremy, Zach, nice talking to you both. Keep nice on, talking. keep on sucking. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Thanks a lot, okay. Karen. Thanks, Thanks Karen. Karen. Bye.
All right, get your hands on this book. It's called It's Great to Suck at Something, The Exceptional Benefits of Being Unexceptional. Uh, it's it, Again, it comes along at a, at a really interesting time for me, and uh, uh, especially if you are into or have ever daydreamed about surfing. She, she gets into some detail about how much she sucks at surfing and sort of why and breaks it down. It's it's kind of a fascinating read on surfing as well. So if if you're uh, into that at all, that's that's another reason to pick up this book. Um, but uh, how about you, Zach? Are you, are you a big surfer? What do you suck at? What's your deal? <laughs> I am not a surfer. I've I've the only thing I've ever done on a surfboard is is yoga, which I sucked at and on the will water. Never do again. Yeah. Really. Yeah. It was it was interesting. That sounds was... that, that sounds humiliating. It, well, yeah, I mean, there was not much yoga that happened. It was more right. of a just, I'm going to go swimming. Yeah, you, you basically went for a swim. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, no, there's a lot of things I suck at. And, um, you know, we mentioned golf on yeah. the show, but, you know, the being afraid to suck at something is, is definitely something that has held me back for a long, long time. And I figured it out a few years ago that if you just go try new stuff, eventually you don't suck at it. And, but I would, I would, you know, like scope out places before I had to go there because I didn't want to look like I didn't know where I was going. Um, which is weird, just a weird fear. But, um, like I, I hesitated going to the gym and working out cause I didn't want to look like I didn't know what I was doing right. on top of the fact that I didn't want to be like, I can only lift 10 pounds or, or on top of the yeah. fact that you legitimately didn't know what you were doing. Yeah, I didn't. I was <laughs> I was I was that guy that you see those funny pictures on Facebook where people are just using the uh, using the machines all wrong. But you know, but you know, it's funny because that kind of thing, I, you know, I don't know. I've just had such a perspective shift lately, and that is the kind of thing where now I would look at that person, I would look at you doing it wrong, and going, "God damn, good for that guy. He's he's out mm -hmm. here just trying to figure it out. Good for him for just not not giving a shit and just going. I'm just going to go for it. I'm I'm hitting the gym today." I haven't been since 86, but I'm going <laughs> and I'm going to lift heavy yeah. things for a while. Like, I would, I would be stoked well, for that guy. Yes. Now most people go, ah, uh, what an idiot. <laughs> what or an at idiot. least that's what I picture in my head. Right. And, and that's, that is the story that we need to stop telling ourselves because I think, I think you're right. There are people that are there going idiot, but most of them mm -hmm. are going, I wonder how good I look on Instagram right now. Or, mm -hmm. you know, oh, man, I don't want to go back to work after this workout. Or, oh, God, what are we going to do for dinner? Nobody is looking at you uh, on the bench press laying down uh, trying to lift something behind your back. You know, nobody's even aware of it. Um, yeah. So it's so. You just have to impress yourself. Yeah. That's all. You, you just have to be better than you were yesterday. You have to be better than your last lift, whatever it is. Like, it's just so interesting how we have been taught or learned or whatever it is to absorb this reality that we are constantly being judged by everyone around us more harshly or as harshly as we're judging ourselves. Mm -hmm. I, I learned it a few years ago that it just doesn't matter. And the, the number of doors that that opened in just, you know, my social life and my professional life was pretty astounding. I mean, I've met so many people that I would have never known had I not like gone out on a limb and tried things that I genuinely did suck at. And it, it's just been an amazing experience to, to accept the fact that yes, I suck at it, but the only way to get better is to try it. Well, and, and even on the other side of that, you don't have to get better at everything. It's okay to suck at stuff. There's some things that you're just not meant mm -hmm. to do. There's some things that are just not going to open a door for you but by learning that that is not something that you care about feel good about are good at you can put it away and go oh, i don't need to do that that's fine i i tried it not my thing uh i'm not good at it and it's not worth my time to get good at it like you know i i still i gave up that guitar but there's still this haunting little voice in the back of my head that's like eh, you, you got two more you can still learn you can still do it I don't know. I don't know. I might. I might not. But it's something that I haven't dealt with. I either haven't gone. I need to be okay with just being bad at this and just tink around and, and have fun, uh, mm -hmm. or just go. Ah, eh, that's just never going to happen for me. That's cool. 
whatever. Like yeah, the the the, the thing with the guitar though was I always, every time I picked it up, like there was a there was a very big difference between sucking at something and having fun and sucking at something and not having fun for me. Right. And picking up the guitar was never fun for me. Interesting. It, whether I don't know, even the few times that I actually was able to make something uh, that that closely resembled music come mm-hmm. out of it, it just wasn't fun for me. So interesting. It, the idea of playing guitar was a lot more fun than See, than actually playing it for me. So so you're done. So that's why I got rid of mine. Yeah, you've moved on. You figured it out. For me, yep. I've I've had enough moments where playing with others or whatever, like we either created our own music or we're playing something that already existed and it created that, um, that moment of flow where you're just, you're in Mm -hmm. another dimension and you're just playing and it's, you're just, it's just feeling coming out in this, in the sound of the instruments that you're using. And it was just so powerful. Uh, and, and I think in my head, you know, the, the story I tell myself with it is that I'm going to be able to take my family camping bust out the guitar, play a few John Denver songs or whatever, you know, and, and have, <laughs> have my kids singing along and go, oh man, this is, this is living. But in reality, mm-hmm. it's like, bah, 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 bah. and I'm just going, every camper around me wants me to die right now. They, they want, they want to burn <laughs> this guitar as firewood to keep them warm because it would be more useful than the horrible sounds that I'm making with it. Um, on top of the fact that your daughters would probably be going, um, yeah, that, that, that's not music that we're interested in. Yeah. Right. Can you, uh, turn you, something on your phone, please? Right. Do you know some Katy Perry? Can you play some Katy Perry for us? <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be cool. Um, yeah. So, but you know what? Shot down. Yeah. Uh, but, it, but it's interesting with, with this perspective shift, I think, uh, I think I might give it a shot. I think, I think that's going to be my challenge for you, Zach, is to try something that you have sucked at and not given up on. Hmm. Say that. Let's, let's listen to that again. Try, try something, something that I suck at that I haven't given up on. Yeah. Like there's still, you've got There's got to be something where you're like, I, you know, I, I still think I could do that. I sucked at it the last time I tried, but I, th- I think I'm going to give it a shot. For, mm. for me, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to dust off a guitar. I'm going to dust it off and I'm going to try and try and learn a song. That's a, that's a good challenge. Cause I, I don't know. There's quite a bit. Maybe I could go teach a yoga class. I haven't Ooh, done that since I got my go. certification. There you go. Go teach a yoga class. You've done it before. Cause Yes, I have. You were, you but did, I sucked at it. No, you did fine. I took your class. It was lovely. It was very zen. Mm, that's good. I thought it was sucky. <laughs> it was just when you awkwardly weaved in the uh, the Luke Skywalker line. That was the only part that felt weird to me. It wasn't a Luke. It, <laughs> yeah, it was a Luke Skywalker line. But you're the only one who got it. Uh... So, You're the only one who felt yeah, awkward. Yeah. Everyone else was okay with everyone, that. Everyone else was, they were breathing it, man. They were, they were in the flow. They, they got it. Yes. For everyone listening, it was just the words, just breathe. <laughs> That's all I said. <laughs> but it was from Star Wars and Jeremy caught it. Totally got it. All right. Well, before we go, we, we should uh, remind you again that you can still take advantage of a great deal with our partners, uh, Bravest Brewing Company. We have a, a code that will get you 10% off if you want to place your order, get some delicious craft beers sent to your home. Couldn't get more convenient. Uh, use the code FITMESS10 at Bravest's website. You can get there by going to our website, thefitmess.com. Uh, while you're there, uh, you know, subscribe, write some reviews, send us some emails, whatever you want to do to reach out. Uh, our, our email is info at the fitmess.com. We're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the things. And, uh, you can always call us and leave us some, some feedback. 206-659-7667 is the voicemail line. Uh, we'd love to hear any feedback, anything you're doing to, to push yourself uh, out of your comfort zone, try new things, try things that you suck at just cause it's fun, uh, or, or whatever, else, whatever other shortcomings you, you feel like you're having, but. And with that, we are uh, out of time. We're going to be off for a couple of weeks. We'll be back with a brand new episode. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about the next one that we're going to have for you. Uh, we're going to be talking again about uh, some, some tips to manage your money a little bit better, to get that under control. There's a great book. 
that is actually an old book, but it's being reissued with a lot of great updates. Uh, I'm having a great time reading it. We'll tell you all about it on the next episode, which you can get by subscribing on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks for your uh, feedback and uh, interaction with us. We will talk to you in a couple of weeks at thefitmess.com. See you, everyone.